Good morning. Praying for you and miss you and uh, just really missing being able to gather on Sundays together as a body. And so I'm praying that in the coming weeks that we may be able to transition back into services uh, in our building. And so just praying for that and praying for you. I know I'm getting different prayer requests and needs within the church and just lifting you all up. And uh, just missing you in general, just so you know, in case you were wondering. And uh, so we're going to keep going, though. God is good. So this week I was driving to work into Port Leash. And on my way, I drive through um, where there is a school, primary school. And on this particular day, it was really busy. So there was cars backed up and, you know, it was slow going. But as I was driving in, I got to watch parents bringing their kids to to the school, and it was so sweet. You just see these smiling parents holding holding the hands of their kids, and just it it was amazing. This day, for some reason in particular, big smiles on dads walking with their kids. I I would see moms like put tightening the hat on their kids and giving them kisses. And it just seemed like every parent was just um, totally in love with their child. And and so it just reminded me what we've been talking about the last two weeks. And that is, what do I do with grace? And one of the definitions of grace is, is that it is God's favor towards us. And so what does that look like? It looks a lot like a parent with a smile on their face, holding the hand of their child, tightening the hat, giving kisses and hugs. And this beautiful picture that God loves you so much and wants the best for you. And um, and so we're going to continue this conversation. I, I think this is going to be the last week, actually, that we're going to talk about this. And what what I wanted to talk about today is something that I've talked about in the past. Uh, I've actually shared a lot of what I'm sharing today in the past, but I really felt from the Holy Spirit that this was a message for me. This is another, just a reminder for me, and as well that it'll be a blessing to you today as we look at it. And that's the, the topic of the joy of asking. And I don't know about you, but... Um, there's sometimes um, I have uh, conversations with people, and, and again, obviously, I love to share illustrations of my kids because I learn so much from them, and they're a massive part of my life in these days. And I remember one time one of my children was very upset. They had, you know, one of those faces on them, and I was like, "What's wrong? What What do you need? What do you want?" And they said to me, you know, daddy. And I was like, I don't know, actually. I don't know what's wrong. And so I had to explain to them, you need to use your words. Tell tell me what you want, because if it's just inside of you, I'm never going to know what it is that you want or what you need or what's upsetting you. So often we say it, and I actually, uh, it was a day or two ago, I heard another parent say it. Uh, use your words. And I thought that was such an um, important lesson for us to learn as we're walking with God. And, you know, Jesus and in the New Testament, it is so well taught. I mean, it's it's like the uh, extremely common theme, this teaching, particularly of Jesus, about learning how to ask And so I'm going to read a number of scriptures just to kind of highlight how much Jesus talked about this and others talked about it. And I'm I'm going to um, bring some verses of Jesus, who is the Lord's uh, brother physically, grew up with him, James. And uh, I'm going to read some of those scriptures. But if you got your concordance out, 
you could look at this word ask uh, and see that it's used so, so many times in the New Testament. So let me, let me read some of these because it's taught thoroughly. Matthew 7.11 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. Your Father in heaven gives good things to those who ask him. Matthew 18, 19, Jesus says, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Matthew 21, 22, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Mark eleven twenty four. therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. John 14, 30, 13, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I cho chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. John 16, 24. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So this is just a few of the times that Jesus was teaching about asking. Now let's look at some of what James said. In James uh, 1, verse 5 to 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And then 1 John the, the, the wonderful, close disciple of Jesus, he says this, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. So why in the world would, you, would I need to talk about asking? Because it seems so simple and so natural that you would think that uh, I wouldn't need to talk about this, but it's amazing how uh, unnatural it becomes the older that you get. You know, as a, as a child, you know, it's just so easy for kids to ask, you know, it's the first thing that they do. They, they learn how to cry in order to get help from mommy or daddy who can't handle hearing those cries. And so they give them the bottle or they burp them or give them whatever they need because they know the secret of dependence, right? And Jesus taught so often that it was so important to learn to be like a child in order to participate in the kingdom. And so yet we, we, um, we kind of do it the other way as we get older. We, we want to become independent. We want to do it in our own strength. So so this is a thing that we have to keep going back to, in a sense, spiritually, is that we are dependent on God and he desires us to ask him to use our words. And so it is something so simple, a child can do it. Yet, at the same time, there is a process of learning to develop and grow in our journey of learning how to ask. So it's, it's very simple. In one sense, it can be just a crying out to God, God, I need you. But then at the same time, there, can, there are some things that Jesus teaches about it that we can learn. And, and the scripture teaches us that there are ways to do it and ways not to do it. And there are lessons that we can learn in order that we get better at learning how to ask in a good way, in a right way. And, um, but, but don't let the complexities of, you know, the, the more development that I'm going to share stop you. If you're just early on, just you haven't even learned how to ask yet because you have to start somewhere and a good place to start is just learning how to ask. Father, 
help me, use your words, whatever, you know, what, ask what's in your heart, bring it out before him. Okay, so, but, but, but there is a process of development. And this process of development is, you know, it's just like anything. I suppose for me, what I look at, look at again, it's my children learning how to ride a bike. I have my two-year-old who now is um, borrowing his older brother's balance bike. And what he does with it is he just holds the handles and he just walks. The, you know, he's basically taking the bike on a walk. He, he doesn't balance or anything. Then I have another, old, my older one, he's pushing the balance bike and he's gliding for a while. So his feet are up and he is going. Then I have another one who, who's just speeding circles around our house on his little bike and my oldest one as well. She can just ride around the, the house without a problem. She wants to ride on the road and we have to hold her back sometimes <laughs> in order that she keeps safe. And so this is a, the process of development that we go through. And it's the same with this seemingly simple um, topic about asking, learning how to ask. And um, so uh, one of the verses that is uh, helpful that I'm going to share with you today, there's so many ways I can go with this, but this verse is uh, important and what I want to share about. So this is in James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. And he says this the most clearly. He says, you do not have because you do not ask God. Okay. And then he goes on in the next sentence. He says, and when you ask, you do not receive because you ask wrongly. So in these two sentences, I see two dangers as we journey toward learning how to ask. The first one is, is simply, you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask God. And uh, this week, um, my wife had a conversation with somebody and she says, could I pray for you? And they said, no, no, I'm not religious. And plus, I think he, you know, whatever you're going to ask, he probably is busy up there with other people right now. So isn't that interesting? You know, that's such a, there's such a pull. And I think that's the common idea. If Even towards prayer, we think, well, there's always somebody with a greater need than me. So who am I to ask? But the scripture says, you need to ask. If you want to receive, you've got to ask. And then the second part that he says is, is that the danger on this journey of development is that you are asking wrongly, which is interesting too. So again, a good place to start is learning to ask. But then as you go on, you learn how do, how do I ask in a right way? What is the right way? If there's a wrong way, what is the right way for me to ask? So let's talk about step one, not asking. Um, first of all, you just must ask. Uh, again, I, if you're a new Christian, this is where... This is so exciting. This is such a blessing to know that God wants to hear from you. He invites you to ask stuff from him. So my encouragement to you on your journey, whether this is brand new to you or you've been like me, you've been on this journey for a long time, but you realize, man, I, I forgot how to ask. I've stopped asking. Uh, for whatever reason it is, I've really slowed down my asking. And so God is speaking to me right now and he's telling me, he's reminding me. And so he says, ask, ask him anything. Be God's child. Uh, open your heart to him. Right? If you, it, it, when you, when you, um, when you ask, what are you doing? You're actually verbalizing your heart. You're opening up your heart, you know, like you could be an upset child, frustrated and internally angry. And the father may just be saying, you got to say it with your words because he wants to know your heart. And so then as we ask, we can also understand that usually there are there are three ways that God will respond to us. And also, I'm going to share a fourth one a little bit later. But in general, the three simple ways of understanding how God can respond to us is that as we ask, he can say yes, and he can say no, 
and he can say later. So those are three simple ways that God can respond. And I'm going to talk about the fourth way as well as we look at step two in our development of asking. So um, what's amazing is, is that God often answers what we think of as imperfect asking. Asking. He's surprising. He, he will answer things that we wouldn't think would be a big deal to him. I know I've had that many times in my life where I've asked about seemingly insignificant things, yet miraculously he answered me. And it really shared with me his heart towards me. And it was a great blessing to me. And so the I think one of the big reasons that God invites us into this um, into this asking is because he desires relationship with us and he's made us to have relationship with him. And it's not just a transaction where, you know, I give him some money and then I get what I need, but he actually wants to have a conversation with us, a relationship, a give and take relationship, right? Because he knows, but he wants to hear from us. That's amazing to me. So, so my first encouragement is step one, the Christian prayer life is asking. Just ask. Number two is, uh, you know, he, he, James says, you ask wrongly. And so step two for me is, is that I believe that God wants us as we develop and grow in this area of asking him is that we learn how to examine our prayers. Have you ever examined your prayer? So James 4.3, he says, I'm going to kind of give the next couple of words that he adds onto that scripture. He says, you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. And so it's amazing when we pray out loud when we actually verbalize something that we actually not only with praying but even speaking when we when we speak something out we actually can even see our own heart in a better way more clearer way and so God invites us to ask but then he also wants to develop us so that we continue to grow in our uh, relationship with him and and so what I would I love to pray as I pray? And I, I had a good friend who, who, whenever I would meet with them to pray, they would all, all, very often say, Lord, teach me to pray. <laughs> Keep teaching me how to pray. And this is a great thing that the disciples asked. Uh, Lord, teach us to pray. And he taught them the Lord's Prayer, which is a whole nother aspect of um, prayer that you could talk about. But we're looking at asking. And so... Um, as you pray, you can also take that opportunity when you're praying to look at what am I praying? How am I praying? What am I asking? Because as you do that, you begin to you begin to see you'll begin to see your motivations. You'll begin to see the the great loves that you have in your life. You'll begin to see um, areas of weakness you'll begin to see your heart. And just as your asking allows God to see your heart, your asking can also help you to see your heart. And uh, so God is very interested in our heart and desires. And, and so he invites us to bring, bring it to him. And uh, so I, uh, there's a couple stories that I love because... Um, you know, I talked about those three ways that God will respond to our asking. Yes, no, and later. But another way that he can respond to our asking is a way that he responds so often in the New Testament when people would come and bring him questions or bring, maybe not bring him questions, but he would overhear their questions and how he would either turn that question back on them to reveal their heart to them 
or he would um, ask them a different question in order to reveal their heart to him. So this is the fourth way that God can respond. When you ask, he can ask you something. So that's the fourth way. He can ask you. And so Jesus did this with his disciples this one time in, in Mark. Uh, it's in a few of the Gospels, but in Mark 9, 33 to 37, it, it talks about how the disciples were on the road and they were discussing with themselves which one of us is the greatest, right? Uh, you know, I think I'm the greatest because of this. And I, I want, so, so they, they were having this conversation and then um, Jesus goes and he asks them, what were you guys talking about on the road? And then he says to them, he says, uh, he, he took a child and he put them, he put the child by his side and said to them, whoever receives the child in my name receives me and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the one who is great. And so Jesus, these disciples, their hearts had been revealed. They were having a conversation with themselves, but Jesus took that opportunity to re reveal their heart to them. And so he, but he revealed their heart to them and showed that the desire for greatness wasn't a bad thing, but the way that they were going about it was the wrong way to do it. And so he didn't just say, why would you guys even think about being great? What, what is wrong with you? He, he actually, in, in a sense, was saying that desire that you have is an amazing desire. The desire to be great and, and have an impact is awesome. But this is actually the way in my kingdom that you go about getting greatness or being great. You humble yourself like a child and you serve others. That's the key towards greatness. So he redirects them. And this is how he'll do it with us as we... Uh, ask him for things, he may say, hey, why did you ask that way? Actually, that's a good thing that you're asking for, but actually this is the way that I want to see that come into your life. So this is it's just amazing how God um, examines us and shows us ourselves as we begin to ask. And so then the other story that I have, there was this time when Jesus was going to go to a town and the town didn't receive him. And I mean, they, the disciples, there were, there were miracles happening everywhere. Amazing stuff was happening. And the disciples were on a high. I mean, they knew that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was powerful. He was healing. Crowds were following him. And then this town kind of rejects him. And so the disciples come to Jesus and they say something amazing. They, they say the people, the people did not receive him. And when, when his disciples, James and John saw it. They said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? So here they are. The disciples are praying a prayer in a sense. They're saying, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And then God responds. He examines them and he responds to them to show them the heart of their prayer, the heart of their asking. And he turned and he, and he rebuked them. And he said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man came not to destroy people's lives, but to save them. And so then they went on to another village. So isn't that amazing? I mean, that he invites us to ask. And what's amazing is that the disciples thought they could ask such a question to Jesus. They, they opened up their heart. You know, they thought they were going to do something good. But Jesus said, no, that's not it, guys. That's so messed up. That's not my heart. And no. And so he showed them their heart. And it was a help to them because he, had, he desired good for them. So Jesus said no. And so uh, God can always say no to, to us as we ask whenever it undermines the purpose that he has for us. And so the purpose for him and for his disciples was that they were bringing the good news and to bring salvation, not destruction of people. So that was the heart. And so their, their motives needed um, adjusting. Okay, I want to really quickly now, I'm, I'm going to try and really wrap this up very quickly now. I just wanted to highlight um, 
four more things in your development of um, asking. Four more things that Jesus taught. And he's taught a number of different things, but these are real highlights within the scriptures that you can look at as you begin this week to begin to ask God and have that conversation with him. The first one is, is that in our asking, we're invited to ask persistently. And you can look at this persistently in Luke chapter 18, which is the parable of the persistent widow. And this is where Jesus teaches that we should always pray and not be discouraged because our Father is a good judge and he will respond as we ask. So we ask persistently. The other scripture that you can look at for persistently is Luke 11, 5 through 9. And this is um, the, the parable about the person who goes at midnight to ask the friend for bread. And it's it, it wasn't just because he asked, but it was because he asked persistently that he got it. Okay, so that's the, the first one. Uh, first, we ask. The next one we can is we, we can um, examine our asking. But then let's look at what does good asking look like? First one is persistently. And then the second one is ask confidently. So there's this story of a man who brings his son to the disciples to get help, and the disciples are not able to help him. This is in Mark 9, 14 to 29. And Jesus asks, what's going on here? And the man comes to Jesus with uh, not great confidence. He's the antithesis of confidence. And he says, if you can do anything, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus says to him, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. So Jesus says, have a little faith, have a little confidence. So I'm saying that to you today and myself. Do you have some confidence in what you're asking for? Do you have a little faith today for what you're asking for? And, you know, you see this in Jesus, the, 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 the times with those people that he was like, wow, amazing faith. You remember the soldier? He said, you know, Jesus, you don't even need to come to my house. Just say the word and it'll be done. Now he had great faith. And then you have varying levels of people. One person just grabbed him. Great faith, you know. Uh, and then you have this guy who's like, if you can do anything, can you heal my son? Not so great faith. Yet Jesus didn't turn him away, but he did challenge him to have faith. So let's have faith. So that's number two. Ask confidently. He, God desires faith. The third one is ask expectantly. Are you expecting? How, how is your expectation? I suppose, again, this is another challenge for us. For some reason, our hearts um, have a hard time believing that God is good. <laughs> I don't fully comprehend why it's so hard, but one of the, the great things that Jesus came to do was teach us that God is good. This is the great message of grace, that God's favor is towards us. His favor is towards you. And um, so what are your expectations for God if God is good? He gives good things to those who ask him. Ask and you will receive so that your joy will be full. Are you expecting good from a good heavenly father into your life? Number four, ask submissively. Do you remember, this is the way Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So that was a great prayer of a kind of a balancing act. Lord, make this world right, and but align our heart with your heart. Um, this is, this is a, this asking submissively is the balancing act because we, we, he, he says, you've got to ask 
ask me over and over ask 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 and and then yet in our asking we're called to bring all of our heart to him confidently uh persistently expectantly but then also at the same time submissively lord this is this is what i want this is what i desire this is um this is the direction that I think is the best, so I'm bringing it before you, but but Lord, I'm bringing this to you, and I know you have the best in mind, and so I bring it to you, but I also submit it to you. May your will be done, whatever is your best. Remember Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, take this cup from, from me, but not my will, but your will be done. So Jesus knew how to ask in an amazing way. He knew to ask, lay his heart bare before God, but then always bringing the other side to it. And I submit this into your hands. So this is where we have um, this beautiful mystery of asking while trusting that God's going to take care of it. Um, and this is our, our confident humility. So today, I uh, just want to encourage us to be reminded to be very bold. Be bold. Uh, be bold. In your own eyes, probably, this will be a bold thing to do, to ask. And it might be uncomfortable because it seems like it's very... Um, it's beyond what you should ask, but... God invites you to bring your heart before him and open it all up and just begin to ask him. And I'll tell you why you can be so confident. The reason that you can be confident in your asking, the reason that you can be bold in your asking, the, the reason that you could ask God for things in such a shocking way is all because of Jesus. He's the reason. He's the one who opened the door for us. And the reason we can ask is because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Not because of our goodness or some sort of um, pride or that we did something good enough to earn it. Because we didn't earn it, actually. We, we don't deserve to be heard. But because of what Jesus done, has done, we are invited and brought to the table of the Father who gives good gifts to his children. So let's ask God with boldness and with specificity. Get specific in your asking. Be bold, be expectant, be confident, be persistent. But then also have patience and submit it to God's will and his wise love that he knows what's best and all because of Jesus, all in his name. And, and so Jesus invites us into a relationship with him and with his heavenly Father that we become the children of God who can ask. Let's pray. Let's ask the Father. Father, we thank you for this word, your word, and this reminder about asking. Lord, we pray that you will teach us how to pray. Lord, just I believe that um, we need to know your goodness, Lord, more and more. Thank you for all the ways that you've demonstrated your love for us. And I pray that we would be a people of faith, even in our asking, that we would come boldly before the throne of grace, asking for your grace and mercy to live the lives that you've given to us, to do what you want us to do, to enjoy the every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from you, our Father. Not only do we need to know that, but the world needs to know that. And so we pray that there would be a, a new level of beauty in our relationship with you that would just shine out to others as well, that they would see this the beauty of our relationship with you, even in this conversation of opening our hearts before you in prayer and, and asking and receiving and and submitting to you in your ways. And so we pray that you do this work in us, Lord. And Father, I want to lift up every one of my friends here who are listening, 
who are um, sick, who maybe they have something they don't know what's wrong with them. Heavenly Father, I ask you, through the name of Jesus, that you will touch them, touch their, their stomachs, touch their backs, Lord God. Bring the release of pain, bring the healing touch, Lord God, uh, that they will be well, that you give them the keys, Lord, and, and that they would open um, and experience your goodness, Lord God, in their, in their lives and in their bodies, Lord. And so I bless them. I bless and pray for every per person here who's discouraged or anxious, fearful, Lord God. I pray that you give them a touch of your uh, peace, Lord God, a, a touch of your love. Holy Spirit, thank you that you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. So I pray for, for love to overflow, Lord God, um, for strength, for your strength, and Lord, for clarity in their minds, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your perspective, and we depend on you, Lord, and we just say today, we need you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Sunday School. Today we're going to talk about God's creation, but first we're going to praise the Lord. I will show a song to you and we can sing together. <laughs> Joshua, we will play a short part of the Superbook video called In the Beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, 
and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. likeness. Then God looked upon all he had done and saw that it was good. Hi everyone. Hi. We hope you are doing really well. We are here in the park today. We will talk about God's creation and we want to show you some really cool creation. Look at this. <laughs> Look here, Josh. Whoa! Can you tell uh, some cool. things what God created? Mm -hmm. So, He created birds. Somewhere up there, I don't know. Swans. Beautiful. What else? Oh, yeah. Us. Oh, yeah, and a dog. Created dogs. And us. Us. And he created trees. Look around. Beautiful trees. All kinds of trees. And you know what? The beautiful thing is that God created everything for a good reason, a purpose. And this purpose is that we could have beautiful lives. We can enjoy lives here on earth. And then when we go to heaven, we can enjoy lives in heaven because he created heaven and earth yeah. and everything in it. Beautiful creations. And the best news is that God created us for his image. So guess what? We can be like God. We can do things like God does. We can love people. We can do good to each other. We can be kind, we can be nice, and we can overcome evil with good. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Now look, look, we find some ducks here. Ducks and the lake. Yeah! Really nice, really nice. So, and I have a scripture just uh, to show you. And this scripture is coming from James 1, 17. Every good and perfect gift is coming from above, from the Father of all heavenly lights. Thank you, God. Every good gift is coming from above, from the Father. Yeah. So we can be thankful for everything, for all the good things he he has done for us all the beautiful creations and I just want you to want you to remember and think about the nicest things what you like in creation your favorite for some people favorite creation is dolphin they yeah. really like dolphins for others is sharks. lion lion for and others sharks. stars and moon for or, what is what is your favorite creation josh mine is the simple one a swan a swan swans are beautiful yeah and you know what there's another scripture that i want to close with this the scripture you can find in psalm oh, we need to turn around Turn around and we go this way now because there's 
the end of the road. So this this scripture you can find in Psalm. It says that we were created by God's image and we were wonderfully and fearfully made. That's beautiful, guys. We were made for God's image. So we can love God and love people. That's awesome. Now, guys, it's time to say goodbye. Yeah. And we wish you a wonderful week. Be thankful, be happy. In Jesus' name. And we see each other soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.